Hi everyone, this is Kalyan Kumar and welcome to Product Review. And today in this video, I'm going to present to you another video on uh, PowerPoint, certain cool features of PowerPoint. In the previous one, we talked about Animation Painter and Format Painter. In this one, we are going to talk about Motion Paths versus Morph Transitions. Now, generally, transitions and animations are not comparable. Transitions tell you how, you, how one slide comes on top of the other. In PowerPoint, transitions mean how the second slide will appear onto the first, over the first. In Keynote of Mac, there it tells you how each slide disappears. So these two are the basic differences. But transitions are basically slide transitions, how one slide appears on the other in PowerPoint. And motion paths are animations where you can make an object move from one position to the other. Let me give you a basic overview of these. And let's see what all we can do with this. All right, so let me draw a circle now. I've got a PowerPoint 2016 template open. Let me draw a circle. Okay, so this is the first slide in which I've drawn the circle. And I duplicate it, I go to the next one. Now in the first one, I can make this circle move by using animation. So what I do is select this object, go to animation, add animation. So let's find the custom path. So what I do, I click here and then I drag it anywhere I want. Let's say I want it at this point. So PowerPoint tells you where it begins and where it ends. Right now it does not begin right where the circle is. So I'm going to move this point a little bit down so that the shadow of the circle moves properly to the circle. Okay. So this motion part tells you the circle is going to move from here to here. Now let's see what happens. Now remember you just find an initial jerk, slight initial jerk. That's because the this path is not properly aligned. Say for example, this is what it is supposed to be. So what we'll do is we'll try and make sure that they fit perfectly and See, there's no jerk, it moves here. Now, I can do the same thing with transition. So I've got this object here, duplicate. And this one, I'm going to tell you how it appears. Transition, I'm going to do morph. And then I'm going to put it right here. So what you have to do is, in slide one, you keep the object in one place. In slide two, you keep the object in a different place and the slide, the, the last slide should have morph transition selected. Now see what happens. This is slide two, moves to slide one. Even with transition, this happens. So here you don't have to bother about creating any animation. The transition itself is able to help you animate. Now, how can we use this morph transition and the other transition in certain more creative ways? Well, this is how you do that. Let's go back here. Let's remove all these texts. Let's remove these slides for the time being. Now, what I do is I'm going to create a text box and I'm going to write a text in it. And to make it easier for me, I'm just going to write a three letter word and and keep it at whatever size you want. I'm going to keep it centered. And uh, okay, since only three alphabets, I can keep it anywhere you want. Let me align it at the center and align it in the middle. And let's say you want to change your font, do whatever font you want to keep. Let's say Britannic bold, I think that's sufficient. And let's keep it red. All right, now what you do is that if you want this text to be animated. Let's say the animation I want is that I've got A, N and D at different positions of the slide and I want all of them to come and remain in the position where I really want them to be. So I want them to be in the center of the slide stating and A comes from a different position, N comes from a different position, D comes from a different position and this is how it's done. Now if I want to use the motion path, this is the way I would do. I would first copy this And I'll keep two copies of this. Copy this. 
keep one more copy of this and then what i do that this one the basic one i'm going to change its color to black or to any other color so that i can when i put this text on top of this i'm able to see whether it has been exa exactly placed or not now what you need to do is you have to write the letters a and d separately they're separate entities so a will be animated separately n will be animated separately d will be animated separately but when they come together they will appear as if they have been written in one go so it is very essential that you write and in a given font in one single text box then copy the text box and write each and every alphabet separately and try to make this alphabet fit and superimpose exactly on top of the text box given below so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove n and d from here i'm only going to bring a and then i'm going to kind try and keep a on top of this now i really don't know whether it's perfectly fitted or not so i'm going to zoom in as you can see that's the reason i kept this as black so that i will be able to see this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to nudge this to the left and now you see it's perfectly fitted okay so that was the purpose of keeping that as black so let's let's again copy this and now remove a and d keep only n so i bring it here and let's see if n has gone perfectly or not no it has it is very essential that you keep it perfectly on top of the other otherwise the text will look very odd it would not look as if you written it in one go and now since we have done everything else we just have to remove this and put d and now bring the d here put it on top zoom in as much as you can 400% is the maximum limit and there you go it's perfectly on top of the black now we're going to remove the black thing or you can keep the black thing here if you want it's up to you if you want you can remove the black thing if you want you can keep it depends upon what you want out of it now you got this and written but a and d are different so now what you got to do is select a let's say go to animation add animation custom path you can do use any path that you want and let's say i want the a to come from this corner so and you can see that this a is actually going to come from this corner okay now what you do is you click this part this motion part go to the animation pane this has been selected here now in the animation pane click effect options when you get the effect options it says unlocked in path make it locked the difference between unlocked and locked is that if it is unlocked let's say un uh, let's keep it as unlocked okay click here now if i remove this a the animation will move with it i don't want that so what i do is i go to effect options i say locked when i lock it this guy i can move and the animation will not move but before i i show you that let me also show you something here that this is a problem you see this if you just zoom in and see can you see that there is a bit of this uh, red and there's a light red here that is the place from which it, that the place to which it will actually go to so make sure that they align themselves properly okay so a has been aligned now what i do is i'm going to reverse the path remember we want the a to come from here to here not to go from here right now i clicked here first then i clicked here later it means the a is going to migrate from here to here i want it the other way around so i'm going to reverse it so click on this reverse path direction now it is reversed so right now the a will come from here to here you just have to do it once and then take this a and move it here and see the animation doesn't move because i've locked it let's do the same thing with n i'm going to add an animation motion path and let's say i want the n to come from here so i put the n here and the n and the place to which it will go has completely shifted so let them be properly aligned yeah they are properly aligned now again we do reverse path and then we lock it 
locked and now this guy will go here you can keep it anywhere because he's outside the frame if this were inside the frame then you have to make sure that it exactly goes into the spot where you want otherwise there will be a jerky motion so let's do the same with d custom path let's say i want the d to come from the bottom so here the d is here and again i have to ensure that they are properly aligned this is a new problem that has come up with this in 2010 and in 2016 in 2010 it wasn't there you could click anywhere and it would properly be aligned but anyway doesn't matter we select this and we say reverse path direction and then in the animation of in the animation pane i go to effect and i say logged and i'm going to bring this guy over here so now see what we have done we have put a and d we have put a and d outside the slide and they will from the outside come move together and right now of course i have not set it to move together let's let them all come together so i say not on click i'm going to say with previous so let's see the preview of how it works so isn't it cool the a and d come from different directions and they enter into the slide like this now i can do the same thing with morph animation now in the case of morph animation what i'm going to do it's much more easier so let me introduce a new slide here and let me create my own text box we don't need it to be zoomed out insert text box and i say and and increase the size now again you have to ensure that you write each alphabet separately so what i'm going to do i have written and here i copy this and i write only a in this reduce this text box size if you want make it red now place it anywhere you want you can place it here copy this and place the n anywhere you want wherever you want it to come from and you want d you can place it anywhere duplicate this slide remove this and from the first slide because you don't want the and the black and there we want the and black only in order to help us align the red ones and i know it's not been aligned properly all right now it's aligned properly remove all these guys remove the black text and the third one should have the transition morph selected now let's look at this is the second slide i'm seeing the slide show now look the same thing that you get the same thing if i hit the up key up the upper arrow key it goes back lower arrow key it comes back so basically this was the morph transition versus the motion path in powerpoint 2016 the morph transition is one of the most amazing piece of transitions that powerpoint has introduced of course keynote already had it it was called magic move but now powerpoint also has it it is started right after 2010 powerpoint in 2010 you don't have it on only on the later version 13 and 16 so i hope this uh, video helped you in understanding how this particular transition is done how this kind of animation is done how useful it is for your powerpoint so with that i conclude this video If you haven't subscribed to this channel I encourage you to subscribe to it I make lot of tech related videos gadget reviews product reviews software reviews web based application I showcase how to do videos top 10 videos and various types of tech related concepts are being explained here in depth So with that I take your leave I hope you liked the video if you did hit the thumbs up button and once you subscribe also hit the bell notification on top to get the intimation right on time With that this is Kalyan Kumar signing off have a great day goodbye and thank you for watching